This award-winning series today is, is really delighted to have Melanie Berger with us. Um, I'm president of the Alumni Association, and it's my honor to be able to introduce Melanie to you and, and learn a, bit, a, a little bit more about Melanie today. Um, she is a no-holds-barred blogger and social media influencer. She's the creator of Melanie's Guidelines, which is a lifestyle blog with a snarky twist. And she's won multiple blogging awards, um, including the Best Dating and Relationship Blog of 2014 and the Shorty Award for the Most Fan Nominations in 2015. In addition to writing about relationships, Melanie is a trusted brand ambassador and social media influencer with brands like Microsoft, Cox Communications, Bud Light Lime, American Express, Disney, the NFL, and many more. And when Melanie is not blogging or representing brands, she can be found engaging with her followers online. She has over 120,000 followers through all of her social media channels. She's also, if that's not enough, a professional in the music industry. She's worked for major entertainment giants like MTV and William Morris. So there's a lot of uh, interesting information there. I'm going to ask a few questions and find out a little bit more. So welcome, Melanie. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Well, good, good to see you. I know. It's good to see you again, too. I yes. usually see you at tournaments or out and about, or I am one of those 120,000 followers. Well, so I do I do see what you're doing on all of your social media, too. So it's pretty impressive. But do you follow Teddy Bruschi? Uh, Teddy my Bruschi. Dog. Now, who is Teddy Bruschi? Teddy Bruschi is my cute dog. cute little dog, He's yes. a Havanese with almost 11,000 followers is now. Is that right? Sir Teddy Bruschi. Yeah. I, and I know, in fact, that Teddy was really excited excited about today. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, so. he was very excited. <laughs> but Teddy Bruschi was a wildcat, so he was named after a wildcat. Of course. Yeah, of course. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to learn more about how you got from the U of A to where you are today. So tell us, first of all, what does it mean to be a social media influencer? Okay, so being a social media influencer just means that I people trust what I have to say. So I didn't start out wanting to be a social media influencer. I didn't really even know what that was. Huh. Um, it just basically comes about once you build relationships with people online um, and you start just getting very, very active and everything was about relationship building. So w what was your major when so you I, left the U of A? I was a communication major okay. and I picked communication because um, it was a broad liberal, liberal arts major because you know when you're at U of A you really don't know what you want to do. It seems so far away um, so it was really good advice that I was given um, you know to pick something that would you know pertain to any industry that mm -hmm. I would want to get into uh, so I was communication major with a journalism minor I always liked writing mm -hmm. um, though my writing now is a lot more snarky not necessarily you know <laughs> definitely has a lot more personality to it than maybe some of the pieces that I wrote when I was at school here uh -huh. um, and then I had an internship at MTV when I was a senior here um, and I worked in corporate communications with an S even though communication here is not with an S mm -hmm. um, and I walked Dave Matthews down the red carpet the fifth day I was oh, working there. Oh is that there. right? Yeah um, it's kind of a sink or swim. Were you in New York? I Where'd was in LA, in LA in Santa Monica. Okay. Yep I did the movie awards and Dave Matthews was coming down and I really wanted to walk Gavin Rosdale from Bush, which is funny because I ended up working for him years later. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're like, nope, you get Dave Matthews. And Dave Matthews was actually playing that show. Um, so I was like, okay, you just do it or you don't. Like you can right. either do it or you can't. So I walked him down the red carpet. Um, we did a bunch of stuff at that time with like different TV shows. It was, it was awesome. What an amazing experience. It was. It was really, really cool. And then I came back here and I finished up uh, I was actually in a really bad car accident when I was here, mm -hmm. um, so I ended up staying an extra six months. Mm -hmm. So once I finished up my second senior year, um, or second semester-ish senior year, then I, I moved to Los Angeles because I knew I wanted to be there, and my mom was like, you know you need to get a job, right? And I was like, oh, you know, because it's kind of really? like, really? <laughs> what do I have to do? So um, I actually called my old um, supervisor at MTV. I was like, what do you see me doing? What do you think I'd be good at? And he was like, I think you should be a talent agent. Having no idea what a talent really? agent did, uh -huh. nothing, not knowing. I did my research, found out that William Morris was the best, so I only want to work for the best. Um, marched up to this guy, barely knew that I knew he worked at William Morris. Mm -hmm. He brought my resume in, and somehow they called me in for an interview. And as I was sitting there, little Richard came in and sat right next to me. So it was literally, I think, my second interview right out of college. Wow. Sat with little Richard for almost 45 minutes because I was like, my grandmother loves you. Like, I need to get a picture, <laughs> all this stuff. And he loved it, you know. And he looked exactly the same <laughs> then. It's already been a couple years now, but he was wonderful. And uh, 
before my interview, he was like, I know you're going to get this job. And I ended up getting it. And they put you through a very rigorous, uh, very rigorous process to get hired there. And uh, I worked in Music Central, which was like a boot camp. Mm -hmm. um, and then I really wanted to move on a rock and roll desk because I'm a rocker. And they weren't giving that to women at that time. Mm -hmm. So I saw all these different things coming in from different artists. And I thought law would be very interesting. So I left my job and everybody's like, are you nuts? It's so hard to get in there. Why would you leave? Left my job, sent, I think, 15 applications to law schools. Somehow my resume ended up on in Irving Azoff's office and he's the manager for the Eagles, Van Halen, oh my gosh. Christina Aguilera. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they called me in. I got offered the job. I didn't even wait for my applications to come back. I took a step back, went to reception. And then I was promoted within, I think, a month and a half. Um, it was very unusual at that time. They brought marketing in-house. So I was marketing 19 tours at once. So I had like Don Henley, Velvet Revolver, Eagles, Christina, mm -hmm. Jewel, all this stuff. And then I started doing VIP ticketing online. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where I got a little bit of the marketing bug, I think, with with online and and stuff like that. And then it was it was time to time to move on. I kind of saw everything happening with iTunes and everything was changing. So I left that job and I got a job at MySpace. And then oh, they, oh, wow, I remember it MySpace. Was, yeah, MySpace, you know, and then they, they took the job off her back and I literally cried. I cried uh -huh. in the airport because I really wanted to do that. Then I went back and forth and back and forth and then um, unfortunately I lost um, my sister and my grandmother in a very oh short gosh. period of time. And uh, the blog was started out as just a cathartic wow. outlet for me. I just started writing and people were like, you're funny. You have all these crazy music story experiences. You should just write a blog. So, wow. yeah. There, you just said so much stuff I know. right there. Well, I mean, just like, to unpack. It's like such a windy road. Well, it's not well, so Well, that's straight. kind of what's so, so interesting about where you are today, the path you've taken. As I think about students who are trying to find their way or young, young professionals trying to find their way, right. you had a lot of things happen there, and you had to make quick decisions. Oh, yeah. You had to see what was coming down the road, anticipate trends. Right. And then it sounds like you were headed in a totally different direction into law. Yeah, totally. And And... We're willing to take the risk to take this other opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about well, that's a lot to talk about, but like <laughs> risk taking. How important yeah. was that as you as you built this career? Yeah. How important was it to being open to change? And then starting as a receptionist, you yeah. definitely took a job that was probably below where you wanted to be, right. right? I mean, and I graduated from U of A, cum laude. I was in Golden Key National Honor Society. So coming out of college, I was like, I, you know, come on, I can do anything. Yeah. But you, you've got to put your dues in and, and you've got to put the time in. But I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, life happens. Things happen, things change. Technology, technology's changed. I mean, when I started the music business, you know, we had CDs with artwork and all this stuff, and it was so much fun. And backstage was still backstage uh -huh. where you rocked out. And then with the advent of Napster and iTunes, I kind of started to see all these things changing and all these industries opening up. And I definitely have to say that I was very, very blessed that I have a very close-knit family, mm -hmm. um, and they always supported me. The one mistake I did make, though, that I would like highly if I had to go back I wouldn't you know I wouldn't do it the same mm -hmm. way I would never have left a job without having a job oh is that right and I did that in between um, after I left Irving Azoff I actually went to CAA which was another huge talent agency uh -huh. and I was there for only a very short period of time and it was like there was so much going on even though I loved the lady I worked for I'm still friends with her she's a huge marketing person there um, but it wasn't what I had ex what I thought it was going to be and a lot of times jobs turn out not to be what you think they're sure. going to be. So um, I would have never left a job without having a job. You are definitely more employable when you're employed. When you're, yeah, yes, right. yes, and that's that's a that was a huge lesson because um, it took me a little a little while to get back up on my feet. But everything wasn't so seamless. There was a lot of a lot of tears, a lot of a lot of hard work in between. I mean, even just applying to law school is a lot of work. Yeah. And you know, I was flying back and forth to, from LA to San Francisco to wow. study with a tutor, and my parents were bummed that I didn't want to go, you know, into law school, but that I wanted to work in the music business. But, you know, I, I think that, say when my dad was younger, people used to stay in jobs for 20, mm -hmm. 30 years, mm -hmm. and that was looked at 
as you know your career and that's your profession. Um, I think nowadays it's very important that you're able to move around because there are so many jobs out there, so many different industries that you don't even know that exist. I mean, even just the internet. I mean, there's just infinite possibilities of what you can do online yeah. and you create your own. So I think sometimes um, if you're at one place for too long, it can come be kind of stale and then um, you're kind of cutting yourself short, not being able to learn enough skills. Um, to move forward in life. So uh, definitely scary times, but um, pretty cool about yeah. how it's been such a windy well, road. I, the other observation <laughs> is you're in, very resilient. I mean, to be faced with, with lots of obstacles and quirky turns of turns totally. of fate and illness and all the stuff you had to deal with. So that resilience, it seems like, is incredibly important. Yeah, I think um, I'm kind of, my family's kind of like that. We're just, we're really, hard workers yeah. and I think when things kind of went awry I had no idea my blog was going to become what it is today. Wow. Um, you know I really I went to Barnes & Noble I sat down and I bought a book called Blogging for Dummies. I got about five pages into the book and I bet you it's probably changed you know it changes so fast uh -huh. so you know when when it was a book hits the shelves it doesn't even it, you know it may not even pertain to the industry anymore um, and so I went to social media marketing world and all these different opportunities were available. People were doing so many cool things in social huh. media. And then I decided I didn't want to just write about dating because that's why it's guide, G-U-Y-D-L-I-N-E-S. Uh -huh. uh -huh. um, and I wanted to make it more than just a dating blog because I'm not one-dimensional and yeah. there, neither is anybody else. And you can only write so much about dating. So, so, you know. so what's a typical day like now for you? Oh, well, so I definitely... Um, it gets very addicting. I'm really a competitive person. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I get up 4.30, 5 o'clock, and mm -hmm. I start checking my phone in bed. So I get start with my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook, my emails. I wish I paid more attention to my Google Plus and my Pinterest because mm -hmm. those still kind of kind of pertain. But it's, um, you know, I always say, like, really focus on five channels. Be awesome at them. Then spread yourself so thin on 20 channels and not be that huh. good. Okay. Um, and then I get up and I go through about... Well, let's, let me stop you there. As you're looking at those five channels, what are you looking for? Are you looking for responses? Are you looking for hit, likes? Or Every, what are you looking for? Everything. Any comment, I really pride myself on on responding to everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really, you do. really I, important. I agree with that. I've seen that. Every time I do something, you're right there. <laughs> and within yep. a good amount of time. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's the key to being an influencer is the fact that I actually have, I feel like I have a relationship with some people that I don't even know, um, but I pride myself on reacting, replying, liking, commenting, interacting, seeing what they're doing, and putting that time in. I mean, everything is about relationships and relationship building, you know, so um, that takes up a Even bit on the, in social media? Oh, yeah, that's, that's the key to it. So do you see differences between the channels in terms of the kinds of responses? Totally, totally. I think people are definitely more, you know, certain people like different channels for different mm -hmm. reasons. For example, I'm not on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask you yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm not on Snapchat for a couple reasons. One, I didn't really start building my Instagram until last year when I came and I guess lectured, and the kids were like, why aren't you on Instagram more? Really? And so then now it's actually make more money off my Instagram posts than I do on my other channels because that, for some reason, brands really hmm. get good um, get good play on Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah, so there, each channel has kind of a different kind of person that likes to go on, you know, likes to go on different channels. But no, I'm not on Snapchat because I didn't want to spread myself too thin. And I felt like as soon as you blink, there's going to be something else. And now it's very interesting that they're going public mm -hmm. and Instagram stories and what's going to happen with that. It's very hard to bank on which channel is really going to survive. Because back in the day, I loved MySpace. It was cool. Yeah. You could personalize it with music. What I didn't even like Facebook. And now, you know, I've got a, a lot of likes on Facebook. Um, but Facebook is kind of more where parents are, grandparents are. <laughs> yes, I know. So you have to, you know, I'm definitely more um, PG, uh -huh. PG-13 uh -huh. on there. Uh -huh. um, Instagram is a very good place for me to attract brands that I want to mm -hmm. work with. Right now I'm working with Adore Cosmetic. I'm very excited to have been picked up as an ambassador for all their lines. It's very wow. cool. I've been waiting for this opportunity for a while. Um, and uh, so... So that's really brand oriented. So I like to make those pictures nice and clean, nice and crisp, nice and clear. And that's kind of been coming like 
been progressing. You can see how my Instagram photos didn't start out like that. Twitter, I can push the line because like my parents don't really understand how to do Twitter. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of be a little bit more racy there mm -hmm. because it's definitely a different kind of a different kind of language mm -hmm. on there. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, people on Pinterest, I mean, I picture more more moms maybe liking Pinterest mm -hmm. or, or something like that. So each channel is definitely has a different kind of following and a different kind of person that likes to be active How on the channel. Yeah. So when you say you're a little bit racier yes. on Twitter, is that through your characters or is that through articles that you may attach, a blog that you would link or a photo that you would link to it? Yeah. Or I think like, I, it's or all of that. When I first started building my Twitter, which uh -huh. is, I have the most followers actually on Twitter, which is kind of funny. And which, I love Twitter. It's fun. It's like, it's almost like a secret language. Like, yeah. If people don't right. know how to tweet, right. you know. Right. Um, I think that like my jokes in the beginning were very snarky, like very, very edgy. But I always had this rule that I would never do anything that I would ever be embar embarrassed for my parents to mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And that goes on Twitter too. But sometimes my jokes would be a little bit racier on Twitter just because I knew that I can kind of get away with it. You can get away that. with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I definitely think since I've kind of evolved from the dating and work more with brands, you really you, you have to make sure that whatever you put out on the internet is there. So you always want, even though I can kind of push the envelope, be a little bit more mm, snarky on Twitter, it still has to be something that I can be proud of and never be embarrassed like, oh right. my God, I posted that. Ten years that. from now, somebody yeah. could go back and find Spend it, theoretically, 100%. right? 100%. So two questions. How did you build your following, and at what point did you realize you could monetize I this? Know, I mean, it, that's so amazing. It's a trip. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still tripped out. No, I'm even more tripped out about Teddy Bruschi, right? Yes. So, <laughs> like, so I, I, I wasn't good at Twitter, and I was like, I don't understand it. I don't know how to mm -hmm. do it, and I was still kind of like finding out about the blogging. And like, let's be real, people don't like to read. Mm -hmm. They don't like to read. So a traditional blog. Unfortunately, people were, you know, not unfortunately, but kind of unfortunately, people would rather watch a video, see a picture, our attention spans are shorter. So I know now that my blog's really housed for a sponsored post that I work with a brand where I house a giveaway or something. Oh. Um, but when I, when I first started blogging, I didn't really realize that. It was more for my creative writing, for cathartic uh -huh. outlet, but I knew I wanted to be good at Twitter. I had to build my following. So I would just sit there and I would study and see what people were doing and I would look at lists and I would interact with a million different people and then from there it just started to build and build and people build. People started build. following you? Mm -hmm. yep. Were you following a lot of folks to begin with to, so, get, to sort of get that response? So yes, I mean there's definitely the thing of, you know, you definitely want to start to follow people that have similar interests. Mm -hmm. Like I like dogs, I'm a wildcat, mm -hmm. I'm snarky and funny, you know. Um, I was writing about dating, I am a lifestyle blogger. So I, you could do different searches with different hashtags see what people would, would ah. write, you know? And then fortunately for me, I was on a show called Media Chat. Um, and I don't know how I can't, I actually started interacting with a lot of people in that chat area when I was still in Los Angeles before I moved to Arizona. And most of those people are actually live in Arizona and just being involved really? in this one hour where you use the hashtag Media Chat, I met a lot of people and it opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, and that's, Aaron Kilby actually is, is the host of that. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I moved here, I think within a couple days, I was introduced to somebody from Cox Communication, Martin Jones. And then I ended up going on tour around the country, tweeting about events with Cox and Inc. magazine, like two years ago, as an influencer. Really? Yeah. So you were observing, yep. commenting on yep. what they were doing, yep. and generating more followers. Yep an interest in that, in whatever the, pro the program or whatever they were doing. Right. Wow. And I think it's just, um, I think, it, you know, it's always about content. I mean, they always say, you know, content's king, but um, it, it's all about relationship building. You, I, you can see people that have 150,000 followers on Twitter never interact, or they just got straight, um, you know, if it's just straight links, who cares? Yeah. You know, if you share a link, make it personal. You know, if you want to tweet to some, somebody, make it personal. Don't make it standard the same thing that you send to every single person. People hate that. You want to feel special. You want to feel like you're actually having a conversation mm -hmm. or relationship mm -hmm. with this person. So that's really, I mean, the key to, to building those relationships. And it takes time. I mean, it's not overnight. So were you an influencer first and then the, the, brand, the brands followed? Or how, how did that happen? How'd that, what order? 
So I so I started blogging, and then I was like, oh, God, I don't want to really just write about dating and all these mm -hmm. SEO companies. Another mistake I made when I first started. Everybody's mm -hmm. like, you need to hire an SEO company, and you can only write about okay, one thing. Okay, talk about SEO. What so does SEO that mean? Search engine optimization. Okay. So basically, you know how you rank in a Google search, mm -hmm. um, and people are like, you know, you need to write a lot more articles about dating so that you come up more often mm -hmm. in a Google search. But I'm like, I don't want to just write about dating, you know, and then. Somebody had said, oh, maybe you should do a giveaway or something. And then randomly, I had a mutual friend um, that worked in radio, uh -huh. and she's actually the designer for Def Leppard, and I loved one of her shirts she was doing. I reached out to her. I said, let's do a giveaway. Is we partnered that right? together. It went off really well. And the next one was I got a pitch from Overstock. I pitched them. I said, let's do a giveaway. They said yes, and then they just started rolling. Wow. So like, what I always tell people is, you know, you never know unless you ask. The worst somebody can say is no. Right. You know, so I mean, it was it was a long shot for me. I so you started. started by pitching them, saying, yeah. "Look, this is this is these are my followers. This yeah. is what I can do mm -hmm. for you." Yeah. yeah, and I had a pretty very, small following. Very entrepreneurial, yeah. I must say. Uh, yeah, right? well, I had a pretty small following back then too. I was just really, like, really eager. Um, I just, you know, it was really exciting and it's really competitive and fun. Uh -huh. And I thought I could do a good job and. You know, and now, you know, however many years later, I'm known for my giveaways. I only give away the best stuff, but I, you know, I think it's about luck. No, I think it's timing. Yeah. I think it's timing, and it's hard work, and you get what you put into it. And I put in a lot of hours, a lot um, of hours. So is, is this is your full-time gig now? Oh, this yeah. This is what you do all the time, yes. and you're making a living off of it. I am. Which is fantastic. Yes, and I... And fun. It I mean, is it fun. It just sounds like so much fun. It is fun. It is fun. I mean, I... Um, How many hours a day are you on your phone? Too many. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, I'll bet it's a little bit addicting, too. Uh, it's very addicting. Yeah. So this year, I wrote a post about not being a workaholic. Mm -hmm. So I, I have dates with myself. On Tuesday and Thursday morning, I go to the gym. On Wednesday, I'm taking golf lessons. Mm -hmm. I think we spoke about that. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, and I have to do that because if not, I will never get up and leave my computer. It yeah. is so yeah. addicting because yeah. you're like, oh, I, one more like or Just one more one this more. one yeah. more this. And it's not so easy that, you know, people think, oh, you know, because it, it's still a form of entertainment. Um, but a lot of people think that you can put something out there, it's going to go viral. It's not. A blog post, writing a blog post is like 10, 15% of it. You know, I create all the graphics that go behind it. Then you've got to put it on your channels. Then you have to share it multiple times. Then you've got to interact with people. You know, there's so much more than just writing a post. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why the social media influencer stuff has kind of, you know, come about because people, like I said, don't really read as much. So um, I think people interact on their respective social media channels now. So. Uh is there a lot of competition now oh. in your field, in your particular area? Yeah, definitely. I think that it's, um, you know, when I had started out, like I had said, everybody wanted me to be this dating blogger, and there was no such thing as a lifestyle blogger. Mm -hmm. And now a lifestyle blogger just basically means I talk about whatever I want to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? And at that time, they're like, how are you going to be able to rank on Google if we can't put you in a specific category? And there are the pros and cons to it because say Teddy Bruschi, my dog. I can build his Instagram or his Twitter faster because he's a dog. And <laughs> then we can just all categorize it all under dog. He's uh -huh. a Havanese, he's a dog. There's a bunch of different hashtags you can use. You know you can go after dog people. As a lifestyle blogger, since I have a lot of different varied interests, it takes a little bit longer because you could be pulling from somebody that maybe loves you with a basketball, but maybe they hate rock and roll. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely... Um, kind of spraying it all out there. But when I first started, there was no such thing as lifestyle bloggers. Now there's a lot of us. And, Interesting. And there's a you know small piece of pie. I mean, when you know I have a publishing network, um, I'm part of, it was Blog Hertz, now called She Knows Media. Um, and it's very hard to get into the publishing network. It's hard to get into influencer networks. And then, you know, I can, brands are paying more and more and more money mm -hmm. um, for bloggers or influencers to do great campaigns for them because they just see a better return um, on it than maybe a celebrity endorsement mm -hmm. where somebody knows that they're being paid or they're having their assistant mm -hmm. you know, do an endorsement for them and then there's no interaction after that. You're, you're using that trust that yes. your followers have in you, right? Exactly. And you've got more credibility than a celebrity does. Well, that, that's what, right? you know, and that's, that's the whole thing. It's, 
it's building this trust. Yeah. You know, and it's great on this last giveaway that I'm doing with the Door Cosmetics. A lot of people are like, you really do find the best stuff. Yeah. And I only work with brands that I really, really love, and that will never change. I mean, I people are like, do you ever say no? I say no all the time. I get 500 to 1,000 pitches a day, and I'm like, do no, you really? no, no, yeah. Just That's press releases great. and all this stuff, but it just, it has to be the right thing. It has to be something I want to do, you know, or that I'm interested in or something that I can utilize that I think, okay, well, maybe people would like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Now I have a few questions from the audience coming <laughs> okay. in. I've got one from Tori, class okay. of 09. Um, the question is, can you share any tips on developing your voice? Um, I'm really self-conscious when writing for an online audience. How can I develop an authentic yet compelling and authoritative voice? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. I get asked this a lot. You know, I think there it has a lot to do with, you know, you want, you know, there's there's certain things about having leadership quality, but there's also certain things as make make your own way. What makes you unique? What makes you stand out? When I first started out, snarky, people weren't really all that thrilled with me. Mm -hmm. I lost some friends. People don't like to hear the truth. But nowadays, there's more memes, there's stuff like yeah. that, and they appreciate the fact that I'm honest. I can make fun of myself, poke fun at myself. I think we're all self-conscious. You know, everybody has their own thing that's mm -hmm. kind of kind of uh, hard to throw yourself out there. But I think you have to kind of find what makes you unique and what makes you stand out and just kind of try to test the water. You know, don't go out with a huge bang. Maybe, you know, for me, make, make a little joke and see what somebody mm -hmm. says or, or just put yourself out there so, and, and try it. You know, the worst that can happen is nobody's going to respond to you, and then you're like, okay, well, maybe they don't maybe like that. Maybe that didn't work. Yeah, but I think there's a place for all of us. Like I said, online, the Internet is infinite. You just kind of have to find your niche. You know, there's so many different, like Reddit, I mean, I'm not even there, and there's so much going on on uh -huh, Reddit. Uh -huh. You know, there's StumbleUpon, there's Pinterest, there's Instagram, there's Snapchat. I mean, there's got to be a place where you can find your home, where you can find other people that probably have similar interests or likes as, as Tori does. Hmm. So Great, great advice. Yeah. So here's another question from Mike, class of 03. How do you know how to value your personal brand when you're negotiating with a brand? That's a good that's question. A, I think that's, that's a, great a really question. good question. Um, that's actually been very interesting. So I've seen as... Like I said, you know, numbers aren't everything. It's definitely about the interaction. But numbers do help because you're going to get it in front of more eyeballs. So there is kind of like a sliding scale of like if you have however many followers on this channel, you can charge this much per mm -hmm. tweet. So like I get paid per tweet per Facebook post, per Instagram post, per Google. Well, Google's a little tricky there. Mm -hmm. It gets kind of weird. Um, and per, per Pinterest individually or in conjunction with a blog post. So there's different ways that you can kind of barter. So they can say, so I'm working with a brand, I don't know if I can announce it yet because we're not live, but anyway, so they want one 500 word blog post and mm -hmm. they want three social shares and they pick which channel they want and they'll give me a specific price. And did they create that and come to you and say, this is what we want? Correct, okay. and, and it's changing all the time okay. now because I see definitely um, there are certain people that come to me with a like a quote, I'm like, no way, no way that's not even going to work. So I wouldn't say that there's one specific monetary amount, but if you have something to back it up, mm -hmm. like for me, my giveaways are great, right? I have 150,000 entries on the one I'm doing right now, 70,000 people have entered. Um, wow, so can you me, talk about that one? Yeah, that what was is... the Adore Cosmetic one. Okay. And I actually, okay. actually, what's funny is um, I worked with Deep Sea Cosmetic before that, and that came from a very organic tweet was, I love Deep Sea Cosmetics, I use it all the time because it was my parents' favorite one. They contacted me, I pitched them a giveaway opportunity. The giveaway did fantastic, had 75,000 entries. Wow. Then they contacted me about this next brand, Adore. Huh. This one's doing fantastic, it's gonna wrap, and I'm gonna do one with crystals. I'll let that one come huh. out for, for next month, so look for that, it's gonna be great. Um, so, and, and I think with the work that you can do, you can kind of provide your numbers, your past experience, your interaction, your success, then you can start to charge more. But it is very interesting because there's no set rate. So I yeah, guess there's no industry standard. No. There's no there's no best practices you can go no. look up and find out, no. oh, this is what I should do. But if you are getting paid 
and it is, you know, there's money exchanging hands, mm -hmm. or if someone is giving you product to review, I'm very strict about this. You have to disclose that. You have to tell your readers, I was given this product to review, um, I was paid for this, and then in your social media, you have to use hashtag AD, hashtag sponsored, and I see people not do this, huh. especially celebrities and stuff like that, and it just irritates me to no end, because you have to follow those, those guidelines, the FTC guidelines, you have to. Same thing with my giveaways. I use a specific app called, it's a widget called Rafflecopter, to do it legally. I mean, huh. you don't just have a product and give it away and not have any back, you know, not protect yourself legally. So I know that was kind of on a tangent on his question. Oh, that's, but that's a great, that's great. Those specifics I'm sure are appreciated by folks who are asking these questions. Yeah, so, but as far as, um, God, what is your time worth? How do you feel? What yeah. do you feel like you're worth? And it's hard and sometimes you kind of have to go back and forth. And if the brand passes or somebody passes, then maybe you can try to go back to them and say, you know, listen, this is what I think my time is worth. So it's tough. It's really so, a tough one. And are those negotiations usually done via email? email? Okay. So rarely do you talk to somebody yeah, on the phone, which okay. kind of sucks because I love talking to somebody on the phone. Yeah. Obviously, I can talk forever, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, so for me, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. But, yeah, most of them are done via email or there are a bunch of influencer networks mm -hmm. now popping up left and right. But also check if you want to sign up and monetize a channel and you sign up through a network. Make sure that you do a little research on them because I can see more and more popping up where they'll take a lot of a big cut from mm -hmm. you. If you can work directly with the brand, I highly recommend that because then you don't have to give a cut to an agency, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. so, so do a little research before you just sign up with any influencer network. Make sure that they're... You know they're on the up and up because I, you know, it's just like any business. I mean, people yeah. are trying to make a quick buck, and it is definitely not a business to make a quick buck. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. It, it's a lot of it's hard work. Well, I guess that's what, of course, when you just see it on Twitter, you think, well, this is cool. Totally. This must be pretty easy to do, right? That's. It bit. sounds like it's an incredible yeah. amount of time. It is. And planning. Yes. And and um, being assertive yes. and a risk taker. Right. Okay, I got a question from Anya, class of 2015. Okay. To be a social media influencer, do you have to be really disciplined about how much you write? And how do you come up with enough ideas to write on a regular basis? Yeah, I, I mean, like, you know, the snarky me would, would say, I mean, I'm surrounded. I, I, my Twitter used to read that I was a flytrap for stupid people because <laughs> things happen to me that are, like, crazy. Uh -huh. Like, I really don't have to look far for it. Um, so I think that I, there's always something like, oh, I want to write about this or I want to write about that. I always feel, like, very compelled to write about a bunch of different stuff. Maybe somebody will like it and maybe somebody won't. Um, and I think if I get to a spot where I'm like, okay, well, I don't really have a brand I'm working with right now. What am I using that I absolutely love? Uh -huh. And then I try to try to make contact with them. Like I post something online. I say, I absolutely love this and see if I can try to get them and try to kind of not stalk them. Oh, interesting. But, you know, go on their Instagram, write a lot of likes, regram them, talk about them in my Twitter, talk about them on Facebook, share them there, comment, send an email. I mean, you can never do enough, I feel. I mean, unless it's been like six months and you haven't heard a word, then maybe it's, you know, I probably wouldn't wait six months, but you know, maybe it's time to move on to the next, but give it a good shot. And it, it does not happen overnight. That huh. is, none of it does. It takes a while. So do you, do you have like a notebook or someplace where you keep ideas as, as something, as some stupid thing happens that you're writing it down? I have notes for my down? notes. You notes have, for my notes everywhere. You have notes everywhere. Notes everywhere. It's always something, and actually that was a really good thing that I just started doing this year, was put a notepad by my bed. Because I'm like, oh, I remember this. Because if not, I would get up and pick up my phone. Uh -huh. And then I would start doing it on my phone, and then it like wakes you up in the middle of the night. So now I just jot it down jot on it the down. side. I send myself probably 50 to 100 emails a day. Huh. Just, just to remember stuff. Remember stuff, yeah. And then I try to feel like if, uh, if I'm inspired about it, when I actually sit down to write it, sometimes something will happen out of the blue too, and I'm like, I gotta write about this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you get kind of, you know, you get a little bit bogged down in the things that you have to do on deadlines with brands where it doesn't kind of afford you that extra time to write. Mm -hmm. I'd love to do more video. I love mm -hmm. doing video, mm -hmm. it's fun. Um, and it's, you know, you get to get the nonverbals, which I love, yeah. but um, yeah, so it's, I, I'm never at a, at a loss for, for something for to, write. to write about. Yeah, but according to my publishing contract, I have to post twice a week. To, to your blog. To my blog. Okay. Yes. And then how many times a week or a day would you say you're posting on Twitter and Facebook? Too many. A lot. 
a lot. I mean, I and I also, I also, when you see certain and things, do you do it all yourself? Do you use? You don't use a platform to help to post or so. I have not had an assistant since I moved from Los Angeles. I haven't been able to find somebody I can trust. Um, and everything is so personal and everything is very, like, I can't ever have somebody talking like me because they're right. not going to be able to be me. Right. So um, I use Triber, which is basically once I write a blog post, it goes into the back end of Triber and it's a bunch of different bloggers. It'll populate all of our posts and oh. you belong to these different tribes with people with different interests. And then people can decide to share them for you. Oh. So that's a really cool, it's a very cool site. Um, I think back in the day when I had an assistant, I did have them schedule out posts for me. I don't even have the time to do that now because it's just me. Um, but I did use Buffer. I know a lot of people do that. But I am so not an automated person. I like it to be very natural. And when I'm doing it, sometimes I want to share you know, a link with a different picture or yeah. whatever. It's your passion, it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, you're not doing this just because it's a job. You're no. doing it because you really, it's you fun. have found your passion. Yeah, I love it. It's yeah. fun and it's and it's entertaining. You meet so many cool people. And, you know, I always say, like, I I go to bed thinking I know maybe 50% and I wake up knowing nothing about my profession. So wow. it's every morning you wake up, you, you got to go. Like, you're constantly learning. So I always say that because it's just you, you, you never know because social media changes so much. You know, one day you go to bed, you're like, yeah, I totally know this. And you wake up the next day. And something's happened. Anything. Yeah, it, that's I'm fascinating. Well. But you also have to make sure you don't want to compare yourself to others too much. And, you know, I, I was getting a little bit to that. And you want to stay in your own lane and focus. And it's really easy to say, oh, so-and-so is, you know, working with you know, this great brand or look at them on here. And, it, and it's very, it is very competitive because there's a small piece of pie because it's so mm -hmm. new. Um, but you want to just be confident, stay in your lane, know what you're good at, and and you know, and then also give love to somebody that you see that's doing something cool, you know, and appreciate that. And I think just being a real good person and doing that, it, it does pay off yeah. in the long run too. Yeah. Great. So we've talked a lot about your career path that got you to this position. My question now is what got you to the U of A? Well, my sister um, went to the U of A. She mm -hmm. loved it. Unfortunately, she passed away. Uh, we were best friends. We lived in Los Angeles together. Um, and we have two of the most prestigious scholarships actually in her name, the Brenna Alana Berger Memorial oh, Scholarship. Wonderful. Um, and it's for students that have had severe financial obstacles mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't otherwise be able to come to college. And my parents and I, I have taken very, um, very proud of it, um, tried to stay in contact with our recipients and be part of That's their great. life. And it's, it's important. My sister was an at-risk counselor in San Fernando Valley. Um, I was very, very lucky. She was my best friend, my therapist. She gave me so much advice that I still use oh. every single day. Um, you know, so... Uh, she loved it here, and I came here when I was young. She was such a great big sis, and we went to the biosphere. I was just driving in from Phoenix and see the biosphere sign, and went to dirt bags when I was younger, <laughs> you know. And I definitely ended up going to dirt bags a lot when I was older. Um, so, so she was definitely a big influence. Um, I also went to a feeder school for Stanford in Northern California. There mm -hmm. was a hundred and ten of us in my graduating class, and most of everyone went to Stanford or Ivy League schools. So I thought I wanted to go and play softball at Boston University. Mm -hmm. Come home, it was so cold. I looked at my dad, I was like, there is no way. And then the Cats won the championship in 97, and I'm like, ah, I'm going to U of A. That's great. And that was it. I was in Lake Tahoe, I was with like two of my best friends. The Cats won, it went crazy. I'm like, oh my God, it's a no-brainer. Right. Yeah, and That's so, great. and I, I mean, it was the best time of my life. You know, I'm still friends with Tons of tons of people writing me text messages. Melanie, did you know I just got the email blast? You're on the show. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, it's me. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. So, <clears throat> what were your career goals while you were here? Certainly not this, right? It didn't exist, probably. No, it wasn't that. I really didn't know. I honestly, I really didn't know. I think when my mom kind of like looked at me and said, "You know, you need to get a job." I think you go to college, and especially here, it's such an amazing place to be. I always knew I needed to work hard, and mm -hmm. I did very well in school, mm -hmm. um, and that was my job forever. So I think once I kind of got out, I really, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I kind of always thought music. My cousin worked for Motley mm -hmm. Crue for a long time, so 
I always had that passion. My sister always loved music, and I just knew I wanted to go to L.A. and do something in entertainment, but I wasn't really sure what. So, so you think that's okay to not know what you want to do when 100%. you graduate? 100%. I think Probably that's a sure, reassuring for a lot of students who may be watching oh, who yeah. think, oh, I, ha I don't know what I want to do. Oh, my God. I feel like I still don't know exactly what I want to know. <laughs> but, you know, I mean... No, I, it changes, it right? It changes, and that's what I said. Life happens. You know, things happen. I mean, you know, you know, unfortunately for me, it was something, you know, I lost my sister, my best friend, mm -hmm. that kind of, you know, made me discover this blogging thing. Um, so things happen in life that you can't plan for. So I, that's why I think it's really good to go, if you don't know, go for a broad liberal arts major, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think that, you know, relationships are at the heart of everything. everything. At everything. You know, relationship building is at the heart of everything. And, you know, I think being a comm major was awesome. And also in that major, I was able to learn about, you know, marketing, persuasion, argumentation. And I was like, okay. And my mom was always like, I think you should be an attorney. So it was always going to be something marketing, mm -hmm. something in law, maybe. I didn't really know. And then, you know, and then I worked on my relationship building at Dirtbags as a polo card. Well, and it also sounds like your internship was really important yeah. to you yeah. at MTV, at MTV. I mean, that's, and cultivating those relationships. Totally. I, I really didn't, I, I guess I really didn't really think about press. Uh -huh. I don't know why. I didn't really know. I think that's another thing, too. You might have your, you know, have your sights set on you think you know what somebody does, but when you actually get into that job, it's totally different. You know, I didn't know what an agent did. Well, an agent really books a room. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. They are not the ones actually close to the music artist. And that's what a manager does. But I had to go through being an agent and wor or working at an agency to fi figure that out. And then it moved me to learning about what a manager did. Huh. So, and I think nowadays things change so much. There's so many different kinds of jobs. So it is totally okay not to know. Yeah. Yeah. That's Just very work reassuring. Hard in, in school. So what, what were, um, talking a bit about your experience at the U of A, what were some of your favorite memories? Oh. You mentioned going to the biosphere, but were there other cool. things that, was so that cool. really stand out as you think about your experience here? Well, there were so many things. I mean, I, I, I was also, I also took notes for the SALT program for, I was a note taker for that. Mm -hmm. So I just said, I, well, let's see, I lived in Coronado, which I loved. It was awesome. I went to the biosphere, always a basketball game and a football mm -hmm. game. You know, they were always fun. Um, God, my friends. I think also, like I had mentioned, I was in that bad car accident. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that I was able to have so many people kind of rally around me and support me and help me to get through that, both faculty and friends, and some people I didn't even know, I think was amazing. Um, I just think the whole experience in general was awesome. It's very hard to sum it up, but it was really, really unreal. It's a great four and a half years. Great, four yeah, and a half years. Awesome. I wish I could do it all over again. My mom's like, why are you rushing? You want to stay in school. It's the best time of your life. Yeah. Totally the best time of your it life. It is, right? I, I, I agree. Students that want to graduate early, yeah, I think, why? oh, why? you're missing out on such a great ex experience. That senior year is so awesome. Yeah, it really, really is. And I got to do it almost twice. I mean, the first part I didn't <laughs> really plan on. But. So what, what were some of the, the early kind of lessons you got while you were here that um, have helped you be successful? So, um, I mean, I think that it, it, was a, it was definitely a big change coming from a small private school. Mm -hmm. so I had so, so few kids in my class. So for me, I think just kind of getting over, kind of finding my voice, finding who I was as a person. I was a little bit on the bitchier side a little bit when I was younger. <laughs> my sister was like, you know, if you don't change your attitude, people aren't going to like you. Uh -huh. So it was a very big maturing growing up uh -huh. experience. I don't think the bitchiness was from being that way, but maybe just not being totally 100% comfortable in my skin and knowing mm -hmm. who I was. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through Rush twice, um, and all my friends were in sororities, and it just wasn't for me. I, you know, I just, but I learned a lot about myself with that, mm -hmm. you know? And I think just also being able to, it was a huge difference, like being, you know, coming to this school, going, like living in Coronado, being in a class full of like 100 people, and like looking around, it was more people that, you know, so many people just, Finding myself and my voice, I think that was yeah. that was really a big part of when I was coming here and how it kind of shaped me as a person. You know, everybody's so nice. You know, here, yeah, yeah, great. everybody's just we, really nice. We aim to be, you know, and it is true. I mean, people people are like, "Don't you miss California?" I don't miss it at all. 
I love Arizona. I mean, I moved here, you know? I mean, I love it. Yeah. I, it was really just the best time ever. That's awesome. Well, yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so I have another question. This comes from Nick, class of 2013. What's it like to work from home, not in an office? And are there clear lines between your work and personal life? Good question. Really good question. Something I never really thought of actually until that's a really interesting that he asked that because um, I was living in a condo and I had my condo set up that, you know, my kitchen and my family room and my office were all in the same room. So I never had any break from work yeah. and from relaxation and from eating my dinner or anything. So there was no break. And I think that I was starting to get very overwhelmed. And I think that it was getting really, really hard. I know some people fear that they're not, you know, being at home, that they're not going to be able to have the drive or whatever to work from home. Mm -hmm. But I think the best thing is, is also to get up, get dressed, do something active in the morning, get a cup of coffee, put yourself together before sitting down on the computer, just like you would do when you were, if you were going, going to the office. Going to the office. I make my bed every single morning. I walk my dog. You know, I go to the gym, which I've been really good about doing now. My golf lessons and making sure that those things are still intact, because then this way you you, you it's about time management, and you have to be you have to be able to do that as well. But then on the flip side, you don't want to be like me and not have any break, and and not have those things. Mm -hmm. So now I moved into a house. And my kitchen's all the way over here, my family room, and my office is over here, and it's better, even though I like to work from my phone. But, you know, but it's better. It, ma it makes me work a little bit less. It almost feels like you're going to the office yeah, when you have true. to go to the other house, yeah. side of the house. Yeah, definitely. And also, when I first started out um, working from home, I did get a laptop and go and do something at a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure you go out. I also worked, I had an office at something called WeWork, which is, oh, um, yeah. yeah, so I had an office there. That was great. So that was a great way to kind of learn, network, mm -hmm. meet some other people. Um, learn, kind of still feel like you have that office environment. So I think there's a lot of different options for different people, but I think the key is get up, get dressed, brush your teeth, put yourself together, you know, and then you'll feel like you're ready. Don't just roll out of bed in your pajamas and like... So I think you mentioned a little bit earlier that you went to a, a conference or a workshop where you met some other bloggers. Yeah. You, so having a, having a set of colleagues. I mean, where do you, how do you find people that do what you do and do you connect with them? Is that, or are they the competition? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't really, it's funny. A lot of people are really worried that they're going to, okay, this will take this and this will take that. I'm not really worried because I kind of, I have my own voice and my, my, my brand is me, mm -hmm. me being me and honest and funny if people think I am, if they don't think it's funny. Nobody can copy that, one. right? Yeah, I mean, right. You, that's your unique yeah, and statement. if they don't like it, they go to the next, you yeah. know, they go on, and I, I can't take it personally, so you have to kind of learn not, not to take it to heart, because mm -hmm. not everybody's going to love you. That's just, they're just not. Um, but I think that um, when I first started, I, f I heard about social media marketing world. I think there's actually one happening right now in New York. I think it's the first time it's in New York, but it happens in San Diego, and it's fantastic, and it's not just bloggers. I mean, it's anybody in social media. Um, I, that's where I saw Jay Bear speak, actually, oh, when Hug Your Haters came yeah. out. Hug your haters, one of our haters. alums, yeah. former cat in the cat, cat in the corner former office alum. Exactly, yes. I watched him back yesterday. He's great. He's a great speaker, and I actually met a lot of people during that. And we all do different things in social, huh. um, but we all have that commonality that we like being online, and then we have a little bit of nerding out on there. So I don't think I've met a lot of bloggers through that one per se. Um, I went to a, uh, I went to something called the Blog Pause last year, which was a dog <laughs> blogging conference because uh -huh. they you can make a lot of money off your dogs because wow. I mean it's marketing 101 babies and puppies yeah and so brands if they find you know like Teddy Bruschi has a dedicated following of people that love Teddy Bruschi you know and people ask me about Teddy all the time it's so weird I I was at that conference people were more interested in Teddy Bruschi than me is that right and I'm like you know I do it like he can't tweet himself he's not really doing that he's not really doing that his paws don't work like that so <laughs> they, they were not I'm like okay, so my 120,000 followers don't count but they were just more interested in him because they know that his following is dedicated to dog lovers and that's where they want to be it's amazing and you it's said 40,000 how many 10, does he has 10, he has 10, 10, 11, 10 11 thousand right now wow. yeah yeah, and I just started it because I did something with the NFL last year, and he happened to be in one of the pictures because there were very strict guidelines working with the Cardinals. And my mom was like, you should just start something for Teddy Bruschi. And 
Unbelievable. People yeah. follow Who Teddy knew? Bruschi that don't follow me on Twitter. Like, big people in my industry follow Teddy Bruschi and don't follow me. I'm like, you know I am tweeting for him. <laughs> but they want to, they want, and Teddy, you know, and it, Teddy retweets me. You know, he's my assistant. So that it's, is so funny. It's funny. It's pretty funny. It's great. It's, it's kind great. Of a trip, but, yeah. So you have, you mentioned uh, the scholarship that you have at the U of A, yes. which is very special. Yes. And you have stayed involved. You're an advisory board member, I think, in the College of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Yes. Um, you do guest lecturing for the E Society students. Um, why do you do that? Why do you stay so involved with the U of A? Yeah, you know, um, I think when my sister passed away, we really wanted to do something meaningful. And, you know, Brenna, her her favorite time was here. We both went here. I, you know, we just really loved this school. And we really wanted to do something that was going to make a difference. And we want to continue to make sure that it makes a difference and mm -hmm. that we stay involved in these scholarship recipients' lives because, you know, we've even increased the scholarship from where it started because I wanted to make sure um, that they were able to attend classes. Um, but I wanted to make sure that they were comfortable, um, that they had room and board and food and to make sure that they could have this college experience that my sister and I so much enjoyed. Yeah. So for that, awesome. it's it's really awesome. Um, and from there, you know, I actually Professor Dudes was the old dean in the comm department, um, and he remembered me. And then one thing after another kind of happened, and then they invited me to ask if I wanted to sit on the advisory board for SBS. So. I'm the youngest person on that board by 20 years. I'm very Great. proud of it. That's yeah, awesome. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm there to kind of, you know, bring some energy and, for, and, and shed a little light on social media, maybe a little bit different way of doing things. Um, so it's challenging sometimes. I don't know if everybody's as excited and passionate as <laughs> I am about what I do. Well. So, you know, and it's, you know, I'm very lucky that I got JP and Ginny and they're, they're just so great. Um, and then from there, I worked with student engagement, and then I was on the marketing board, which I love because that's really at the heart mm -hmm. of what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and then they asked me if I wanted to do some guest lecturing in East Society. And I had no, that's another thing, I had no idea that I would love doing it because my sister was the educator. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always like media or whatever person, and I love doing it. It's awesome. It's really, really awesome. So you can't really judge on a profession. You don't know what you want to do. You don't know until you actually do it. And so I did it one time, and I had really great feedback. And I learned just as much from them, mm -hmm. maybe even more, than they learned from me because they're really in the pulse yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm sure it's a great resource for oh, you. It's a right? They were the ones that was like, you need to build your Instagram. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, okay, i got to do yeah. it. They're right. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so awesome for me, and I feel, you know, I feel like I'm still here. Well, that's sort of the best situation, right, when totally. it's a real win-win. You're getting something out of it. Um, thank you very much for the scholarship. Having that kind of a, a, a contribution is, you know, incredible for students. But I think you also point out that young alums have so much to offer that's not just writing a check, True. right? It's coming in and participating on boards. It's speaking to classes. It's being a mentor. So. Yeah. Thank you for that, and I Great. hope any alums who are watching will think about what they can do because this university is stronger because of alums like you, Thank which you. is pretty awesome. Okay, I'll get down off my soapbox yeah. and ask you a question from Gina. Okay. Um, she is a soon-to-be U of A grad. Woo. How have you gained such a loyal following through your blogging in such a video-driven market? Why not vlogging? Yes, I do love doing video. Video definitely takes more time because I can't do it as on the fly. Um, though I don't like it to always be edited. I like it to kind of be me being crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that I'm, I've just been able to kind of, I just haven't had the time to do more video. And that is definitely- Really comes down to time. Time, that's definitely what I wanna do. And I'm not a huge proponent of like, the Facebook Live stuff. Right, I, I wondered about that. Uh -huh. I've, I've seen some people tr do yeah. that, and it's yeah. very hard to do it well, I it's think. It's hard to do it well. Yeah. I mean, if I want to see something, I want to see something that's, you know, there's good lighting, you can yep. hear me, and there's some kind of flow to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to hear something that's all shaky and I can't see yeah. anything. And for me, it just it doesn't do it for me. So if I want to do something, I want to do it where there's good lighting and you can hear whatever I have to say and that it's in some way entertaining or informative. So I think that I, I would lo definitely love to do more vlogging okay. and, and videos. And so where do you think, where do you think social uh, media and influencer marketing is going to be going? How's it going to change? What's, what's the future look like for, for viewers who may think they want to pursue a career in this area? Right, I, and I, I think that um, 
I think the term is becoming like more common. Um, and I don't think that you set out saying, I want to be a social media mm -hmm. influencer. Like you just set out interacting and seeing if people like what you have to say and have similar interests. Um, but I think there's a, there's a big future. I think that celebrity endorsements and, and things like that kind of, I don't know. I mean, you can only see someone, like I always say Kim Kardashian can promote 25 different brands. How do you know which one she actually likes? Yeah. For me, if I'm promoting like one skin cream or I'm doing this neck cream, which I think a lot of us struggle with necks, even like when you're like looking down and da da da. So that's why I asked this yeah. company, I said, I want to do a neck cream. Let's do it. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. So I, I, you, you can't spread yourself so thin because then nobody's going to trust yeah. you. Plus the fact if you never interact with anyone, then it really falls on deaf ears and you know you're just getting paid for it. So I think that it's very important to, to have this social media and the influencer marketing and all this stuff. Um, and I think there's still a big future for it. I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Um, and I hope that they don't... I've, I've written a lot about this, the lines getting blurred between celebrity and social media influencer. Mm -hmm. You can't be somebody that was a D-list celebrity and all of a sudden say, I want to be a lifestyle blogger and social media influencer. Your name already has recognition. You are already a celebrity. Even if you're a D-list celebrity, you are not, you know, all of a sudden a lifestyle blogger. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you are still getting paid to endorse a product. Whereas I'm using a product and I really like it and then I could be getting paid after that because I actually really like the product. So I've got a relationship and trust and they're just an ad. So there's there's that real kind of fine line between a celebrity endorsement and what a social media influencer actually really does. So it'll be interesting to see how this all how, pans out. How it, how it progresses. Yeah. So um, I know we're, we're getting kind of short on time. I, I want to make sure I give you a chance to share with us the best career advice you've ever been given? Okay. I think, you know, what you get, what you get, what you put into something is what you get out of it. You know, my sister always told me that, work hard in, in school and what you get out of it, you know, and that's it. I mean, and nothing is one, two, three, nothing is overnight. Sometimes you're going to, you know, you're going to have to pay your dues and you can't just expect that you're going to leave U of A and walk in and be like, oh, I'm a Here wildcat. I Here I am. And you owe me. It's, just, you know, it's not that way, you know, and there's, and there's no, it's nothing too small or too big, I think, and I think that you can always set goals for yourself. I think um, don't be afraid to ask, the worst someone can say is no, um, and I think that, you know, put your dues in, and sometimes you have to take a step back like I did before you can take a step forward. Yeah. Don't get frustrated. You know, try to take a second, reevaluate, and try to find a, a good support, whether it's your family, your friends, a mentor. Ooh. Um, did you have a mentor? I didn't. I really oh, wish really? I Oh, really? You didn't? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because I know I was looking at the questions, and I wish I could say, I mean, my sister was my mentor, yeah. her, hands yeah. down. Yeah. Um, but since then, you know, I, in, in the music business, a lot of women are very, like, it's so competitive. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to teach you anything. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to give you their time, and nobody's going to give you their knowledge or their contacts. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it's a very doggy dog world. It's kind of nasty. Um, and I think in in the world that I'm in right now, I do something so unique compared to everybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't really have anybody I can talk to about that. Though I can learn from others, and I do do that. I'll see, oh, what's this blogger doing? Just to kind of see what's working for them, what's working for me. And stuff like that. But if you if you were lucky enough and blessed enough to have a mentor, that's great. I'm lucky enough that I've got fantastic parents, mm -hmm. you know. And even though they think I'm a little crazy sometimes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they're like, I'm not necessarily sure I understand what you're doing, but I, as long as I can make them laugh and they're proud, that's I awesome. think at the end of the day. Well, and I just have to say because I'm one of your followers, I I know how much they they admire what you're doing, and, and so I've I've seen that in. On Facebook, it's kind of neat. You yeah. can see that that energy between you. Thanks. So we're down to only a minute. This is this hour has flown by for me. Um, very quickly, are there projects on the horizon that you're looking forward to? Yes. So I'm get to stay tuned. I'm not a lot of. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about the one I'm doing with Teddy Bruschi. I've got something with Teddy Bruschi. Mm -hmm. um, I've got uh, the Adore Cosmetics is just wrapping, so I've got crystals coming up next one, um, and this is going to be all about like neck cream and stuff like that. And um, and there's two other brands that are not quite. Um, um, live yet, so I can't talk about those mm -hmm. yet. So there's, there's always something going on. Every day I see something new, so just 
they'll have to stay tuned and see what's next. Well, let me thank you again. This has thank just you. been a wonderful hour. I've learned so much. Cool. I'm going to go back and check all your pages, thank and you. uh, I'm sure you'll get a few more followers from the group that's watching today, too. Tell them to reach out. I respond so, to everybody. I awesome. Love it. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Bear down. Bear down. Thank you go all. cats. Go cats. Yes.